Hey guys, welcome back. I wanted to make a little video uh, talking about the air over hydraulic drawbar as well as uh, a little update on the spindle. Excellent. So yesterday was the uh, 365th day of this project. It was pretty, uh, pretty awesome. And today got the drawbar cylinder, the new drawbar cylinder, installed, tested, bled, and uh, working. So, um, yeah, grab some popcorn, maybe a 40 ounce Schlissmalt liquor, or whatever your uh, persuasion is. Okay, enough uh, silliness. Let's start. Okay, let's start with the intensifier. Uh, this is an inner pack, uh, 30 to 1 single acting air over hydraulic intensifier. So um, you put in a little bit of air. This is currently 50 pounds. It's hard to see through the camera. Anyways, you put in a little bit of air on a big diaphragm and then you uh, squish a smaller hydraulic cylinder and work your way up through some hoses to the cylinder. So, uh, yeah, this uh, intensifier was bought used off of eBay. They're actually pretty expensive new. Um, this was used, I think it was like three, 300 maybe. Um, yeah, anything with the uh, inner pack on it seems to be uh, rather expensive. So, used, super duper. Lots of stuff on this machine is actually salvaged, used, or surplus. So, winning. Um, so, yeah, this uh, intensifier gives uh, the ability to run uh, considerably more um, Belleville drawbar tension um, than you would be able to uh, do with a standard um, standard like three-stage pneumatic cylinder like you would see on a Tormach or something. Um, so you hear about, you know, TTS tool pullout and um, it's understandable because uh, it takes more, you know, it takes more than, you know, 1,500 pounds of uh, drawbar tension. You know, it's straight up. It's a uh, it's a R8 call it first and foremost, and uh, here let me uh, let me show you an example. Okay, we're staring at the drawbar on a Sneemo here, and it's got an R8 spindle, and typically via some sort of wrench on the drawbar, you're easily, without much effort able to get, you know, five, six thousand pounds of drawbar tension. I'm sure you can get much more if you really laid into it. But uh, a TTS, you know, quick change system is just an RA call it. So uh, maybe people that don't come from, you know, like a manual sort of Bridgeport side and then jump into CNC or vice versa. Um, but it makes sense why a uh, a machine with you know a TTS system and you know only 1500 plus pounds of drawbar tension or whatever you're able to get with 120 pounds of shop air and uh, you know like a three three stage cylinder or something you just can't get there um, so that's the idea behind a little bit more than normal on the uh, tension and the only way to get 4,000 pounds without a huge cylinder or crazy air pressure is to uh, Go hydraulic. So we went hydraulic. There's also a gauge on the intensifier, so you can sort of, um, with a little math, you know, your input air pressure and um, your intensifier ratio and your cylinder 
on the drawbar, you can sort of get an idea of, you know, where you stand uh, with relationship to your, uh, you know, drawbar. Sort of fun, I like gauges. Okay, we're down here at the front of the machine. Um, that is what activates the drawbar. And through a couple solenoids, and then there's also a, a inner lock um, that's associated with the VID, so you can't uh, make the mistake of hitting the uh, go pedal when the other thing's going. So, yeah, let's, um, let's give her a whack. I don't know where you want to watch it. So yeah, it's, uh, it was a little slow before it was bled, um, understandably, but uh, So yeah, that's the the draw bar. Let me let me move the Z up here. Hmm, much better. If I can hit the pedal. See if now. You can see when you pull the tool out, uh, important, the uh, the collet is not, the leaves, the three fingers of the collet's not, uh, you know, holding all of the uh, travel on the Bellevilles. Uh, so, pretty happy with that. And uh, things are coming together, I suppose. So we are looking at the first iteration of the drawbar cylinder. This would be the one that leaked. And um, yeah, it was a bit of a head scratcher. Uh, maybe not now, but uh, I thought I'd share it. It's sort of interesting, to me at least. Um, so yeah, this was like a big uh, chrome, chrome rod. And uh, it was all machined out. And the thing that's different between this one, the first one, and the second one that's working now is uh, you can see here the two uh, sort of different colors of metal um, and the color on the inner bore. Um, this is a, it's a two piece thing. Um, I had some, it's called. I think the company is called like Team Tube and they sell like precision, um, I'm not sure what the coating is, it's like some sort of nitriding or like DLC coating and um, it's like cylinder stock for making, uh, you know, custom uh, pneumatic cylinders. It's ready to go. You just, you know, make the ends and uh, they come in the regular bore sizes as well. So that was the uh, idea in the first place was to hey, let's put this cool DLC coated uh, team tube sleeve in there and have like, you know, some super duper cylinder. And that was done, this is all turned, and then that uh, sleeve was, you know, glued in there with uh, some Loctite product. And got the cylinder all on there and just kept leaking and leaking and leaking out of a weird spot, like it just didn't make sense. And uh, after taking it apart a couple times, um, we found out what it is, or actually I was like, ah, oh, could it be that? And uh, sure as shit it was. So um, this is a, a single acting cylinder. So uh, there's a dead side of the cylinder and that's what that vent is right there. Let's the air come out. Um, anyways, this was leaking, just weeping around here when you had the other part uh, all bolted together. And it wouldn't leak a lot, 
Um, to make a long story short, the hydraulic oil was coming around this sleeve behind here, coming out through the sleeve and then coming through this hole. So um, I didn't even think, I didn't even think it would happen. It didn't cross my uh, cross my mind, um, but that that was a problem, I guess. When you're hitting something with, you know, 2,000 pounds of hydraulic pressure, it's uh, bound to, you know, find its way out if there's a way. Um, so that was the problem. It was uh, leaking around that somehow. So yeah, it would come down this backside in between the outside and the inside sleeve and find its way out. So, yeah, good little learning uh, experience there. And hey, if nothing else, I got to uh, practice on the uh, vinyl pinstripes. So, cool. Oh, the yeah, the new cylinder. Uh, it's just a copy of this, but uh, no team tube sleeve. It's just a regular, um, you know, machined uh, cylinder home works a treat. Let's go check it out. Okay, the spindle. Um, one horse, Leeson, metric motor, two pole, whatever 17 something is. And uh, from the previous video, a little different take. Um, this, the spindle drive setup is like the three pin kind of drive dog setup and a little custom preload adjuster and some run-of-the-mill notchy tapered roller bearings and a little Kluba! Get to the Kluba! Kluber. Uh, yeah. The spindle was, spindle was sort of tricky. I guess, I don't know if tricky is the right word, but uh, sort of fiddly. Um, yeah, I learned about uh, putting way too much grease in uh, the spindle. And yeah, learned all sorts of things. So let's talk about it. Uh, made a cool little slinger. Six rib J section belt. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, all things considered, um, I'm really happy with uh, how this thing turned out, how it sounds smooth. It doesn't have too many weird like rattles and, uh, and the temperature seems to be kosher, you know, run at a ton and uh, 5,000 RPM, slam it into reverse the other way, 5,000 RPM, ton, everything you think of. And uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing how it works uh, when we're doing some work. Let's set up the 5,000. Um, More Uh Whoops. That's why it doesn't work. There's no S. I can't camera and type at the same time, I guess. How's that look? That sounds better. Yeah, I think it sounds pretty sweet. I don't know if it, uh, carries over on the camera, but...
It's got a sort of a funny little, it's not a rattle, this is at a five, 5,000, and uh, no, it's not good. Braking resistor is working nicely. Um, actually, let's talk about that. Pardon the camera work. I think Eric was asking about this. Um, I, I think I called it like a $12 braking resistor. Um, it might have been like $18, but uh, yeah, these are just like generic. You can actually even get them on Amazon, like Amazon Prime, two day shipping. like. Uh, yeah, we've come that far. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, what is it? Part of the focus. That's a 200, 200 watt, 100 ohm. Um, and this drive, it's a Hitachi WJ200. Um, not all drives let you use external braking resistors, so you need to make sure that yours is, uh, you know, capable of doing that. But, um... Yeah, this drive came with a, a table on your different uh, duty cycles depending on uh, what ohm resistor you pick. So this is 100 ohm. I think this gives you like 75% uh, duty cycle or something on the braking, uh, which is plenty enough. I'm sure the internal resistor would have been uh, okay, but um, it'll be fun to uh, see what it can do. But yeah, I'd say under 20 bucks for sure. They're sort of, uh, they're not the best made things, but uh, they, they look like they'll work. It's just like an extruded aluminum thing with uh, a bunch of like white play sand inside that is not very well contained, but yeah. I give her two thumbs up, dude, for 18 bucks. You can't go wrong. That is the spindle and drawbar cylinder and all it's scored. That's all I got for you today. Um, actually, let me grab something I'll show you easier. Pretty sweet. If you do Instagram, you've probably already seen these, but for the people that don't, just one sec. Made a bunch of T-nuts, 3 8 uh, studs, and a bunch of clamps to uh, hold down the mill, and then I uh, parkerized them. Super cool. So, all right. Uh, thank you. All the subscribers, thank you, and uh, thumbs up if you like, and thumbs down if you don't, for sure. And we'll catch you. Uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much.